We are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Once again, it is Alex Chisnell here joining you from Festival of Enterprise. Uh, second webinar of today. First one um, with Dell Technologies. I have got David Bistricki, Services Coach. Did I pronounce your name? Hi, guys. Friend? Hi, guys. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so David is an executive consultant with more than 5,000 hours experience in business training and coaching put me to shame my friend so 20 year career in managing and directing businesses david's going to use his experience skills and knowledge to help us today achieve our goals so what are we going to be talking about today um, we are going to be talking about how to thrive in your home office so during this webinar david is going to be covering the common challenges of prolonged home working what are we seven eight weeks nine weeks for some people i guess uh, of home working um, and how to remedy them along with how to use the situation to your advantage in order to become more productive than ever and it will be interesting um post up you can see the chat function there everybody on the right hand side um let me know are you still working from home or have you moved back into uh, your company's offices uh i know things in the uk have slowly been opening up There's more cars on the road more people traveling into work etc uh, so interested to know if everybody is still at home or or not and from my point of view i've um i've worked from home before like five days a week and then i've worked five days a week in an office and then before lockdown i was in funnily enough bit of a hybrid version where i was doing like two or three days in the office and the other two or three days at home depending on how the move kind of took me. So I'm, I'm kind of used to both, and I do think the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. Um, I really do. Uh, benefits from both, less distractions, more productivity, um, and better work-life balance, I think. Um, those are my thoughts. So um, yeah, post up, let us know. So thank you for joining us, Peter um, in Amersham. We've got Alan in Kent. Everybody else, let us know. Boom, everybody's jumping in. We've got Jarlath in Oxford. We've got Nick, who's uh, working from home still. Clive worked at home for nine years. Amazing. Um, yeah, post up. Chris from Solo Timber Frame is here. How are you doing, Chris? Thanks for joining us once again. Um, I'm assuming, Chris, but I could be wrong, that you work from an amazing home office, given what your company does in designing uh, amazing houses for people. Let us know, everybody. Post it up. Um, okay. So, without further ado, as I say, post up your questions, and I'll be able to, to ask David as we move forward through his presentation. Sarah Craig says, hi, David. Um, hi, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Craig. Thank you. So I'm Hello, everybody. Screen. I'm going to focus the screen on uh, David's presentation. There you go, everybody. Um, and without further ado, David, looking forward to this. Take it away, my friend. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our presentation today, How to Survive Home Office, and maybe not only survive, but to do something to emerge from the home office better than we uh, than we than we were when we dived in. And as Alex said, uh, uh, well, uh, it uh, it is uh, seven to nine weeks for some of us. It may it may seem like like seven or nine years, or maybe seventy nine years. We will see. We will see about that, and we will see about the remedies, and then we will see how to how to transcend it and do something and do something better. Guys, we are in this together. And Dell Technologies are here to help uh, support to support small business. We are all in uncharted territory, looking for ways to support our communities. And at Dell Technologies, we are making sure that small businesses have the right solutions and are supported every step of the way. But sometimes, sometimes the home office is just too much. If you look at the right hand side at the at the picture, sometimes everybody who is uh, who is uh, in this uh, in in this uh, time uh, on a prolonged home office feels like this uh, like this gentleman here. We are con and and if you uh, and uh, if you also like me have the feeling uh, that that this might, really might be the case, like 70, uh, 79 years uh, seventy nine years uh, in a prison doing our time. 
This is uh, in no small matter because we are confined in a small place. Normally, when we go uh, when we go to the office, the whole world is actually open to us, and we can uh, we can stop by buy um, we can stop by at a shop, buy flowers, then go to the office, then go uh, then go for a lunch, then uh, then after the lunch break uh, have some have some coffee on the terrace and chat, and and uh, when we go home, we can we can stop in a pub and have a have a great uh, have a great uh, pint of ale. But now everything is gone. We are confined in a small space. It's like a prison cell. And how many steps uh, is it? Is it uh, to your bathroom? How many steps is it to your kitchen? And that's that's actually the space you are in, inhabiting right now. Come to that, there are conflicting demands of home and work. Uh, that means uh, normally when you are uh, when you are uh, working at the office and then uh, having your leisure time at home. Uh, your home is actually the safe zone where you can relax, where you can uh, lean down and put your feet up and uh, throw the socks into one corner and uh, and the t-shirt into another, and just just be yourself and and enjoy the safety of your home. And all the drama with the customers, with the angry boss, and with uh, uh, with the PNL, um, uh, not uh, uh, with with the red numbers in the PNL. All those things actually happen at work. All those all all this drama happens at work. But now you are taking the drama into your homes, and our primeval brain somewhere deep. Uh, is wondering, okay, am I now safe in my cave? Am I now safe or not? Because the drama is here. So, is it is it actually my safe place, my my zone of comfort, my home, or is it or is it uh, is it uh, where the danger lies, uh, the uh, the office? And this creates a tension, day by day, um, hour by hour. It's like uh, it's as though you would have a, you would have a low beat uh, techno music in the background. Uh, do. Uh, mm-hmm. um, Boom, 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 boom. Every day, 24-7. And this, of course, creates the so-called under-threshold stress, which you maybe not perceive, but it's there, and it's gnawing at you. And, uh, of course, we are de- uh, also deprived of usual uh, social contact. Normally, uh, this low-level stress would be mitigated by, by social contact seeing people there is no substitute to, uh, to seeing people alive to interact with them alive um, life i mean i mean one on one or one on two or whatever not virtually um, uh, when you see when you see now my uh, my screen uh, you see me in a 2 inch diameter screen uh, this is uh, this is not what your brain would call a real social contact so we are all deprived on the, uh, of this, and this is, this is even mounting the tension. What are the consequences of this? The consequences is that we have the tendency to sabotage our support systems more often. And, sub- uh, and with support systems, I mean people, mostly people who are, um, who are around us. Hey, would you stop this? I have a call. This was my wife, right? right? Oh, <laughs> I, what have I done? This is not me. Why, why would I ever snap at somebody who, who is actually here to support me? And would this bloody dog stop chewing the plant? And this, is another, this is another support system, my pet actually, which gives me so much love. And, and snapping at them and behaving in an unusual manner is the consequence of this stress. And this is, this is guys, this is, this is a normal thing. And if you observe something, uh, something like this uh, in yourself, then it does not mean you are losing your mind. It means you are a sane person in an insane, abnormal situation. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you will be prone to see the negative side of things. Oh, this customer will not buy. I will lose this job. Oh man, this crisis will take uh, take on forever. People are dying. What what am I going to do? I, I everything everything is everything is falling apart. Things are coming coming apart at the seams. The whole world is coming apart at the seams, right? Mm. No, actually, actually, you are a normal and sane person uh, living in an insane and abnormal environment. It's completely okay if this is happening to you. Anxiety as well. And of course, and this is maybe the most vicious of all, messing up our daily schedule. Uh, let's binge watch this uh, uh, this Witcher uh, this Witcher series on Netflix today and go uh, go to sleep at three a.m. No problem. I can I can stand up. Um, 
at, at 11 at 11 uh, a.m. next uh, next day and everything will be okay no <laughs> uh, well actually not actually it will be not because your brain is uh, uh, your well-being uh, and not only physical but also mental uh, is uh, dependent on regular schedules and this is now coming this is now coming apart at the seams and uh, our pets know that and kids know that that the rituals and regular schedules bring safety we uh, adults have somehow unlearned that and we should relearn if we want to focus ourselves if we want to ground ourselves again and be productive and be happy and be and be just vital as as we used to be we have to ground ourselves in uh, in rituals in structure and and reintroduce actually safety into our lives and and this is uh, this is this is the uh, the main thing the structure what should we do about uh, about those negative consequences the first one as i ho have already alluded to is reintroduce structure into your life then look closely at your work-life har harmony and my beloved mental stimulation we need much more mental stimulation to get out of those four walls at least mentally so let's uh, let's look uh, uh, in in particular at each remedy the first one is structure and routine and it all begins and ends with sleep. So uh, regular sleep and eating patterns are actually the key because this gives your brain, uh, uh, your, primal, your primal brain, the signal, everything is okay. We have a structure in our life. We have our life under control and everything is okay. So my advice would be go to sleep at the same time you used to go before the crisis and wake up at the same time you used to wake up uh, before if you want to if you want to reschedule your schedule at least maintain regular uh, going to bed hours and waking up hours and the same with eating all those things are regulated by hormones and hormones are like a clock like uh, like this clock and they are very precise and uh, you need to help your body and your mind and we know uh, body and mind are, are uh, two sides of, uh, of the same coin. So uh, with uh, regular sleep and eating patterns, we help our body to regulate, uh, actually to regulate and to be, to be full of energy. Well, this one should be a no-brainer, right? Regular perso personal hygiene habits. But for many of us, it is not because just be, uh, just be honest. If you are in a Zoom meeting and you would not shower for three days prior to that, who would notice? Hmm. Nobody, nobody, right? Especially when you when you have no hair like me, right? Nobody would actually notice. You don't even have to turn on your camera. But the thing is, you would notice, and that's the problem. You would notice, and with each uh, each passing uh, day, without uh, regular grooming, and uh, and I per uh, on purpose say grooming, without grooming, uh, your uh, your sense of normalcy and also the self esteem will diminish bit by bit, a small erosion of self esteem, uh, because uh, with these uh, grooming habits, we uh, you will uh, you will uh, let your body and your your uh, primal brain know everything is okay we have the situation under control this is just a normal day like like any day look at these guys this is my dell badge <laughs> why would i have my badge here why would i uh, have my badge actually actually around my neck well it is not it is not because there would be a tourniquet <laughs> not uh, not letting me in or my wife would uh, would be throw me uh, out of the house but this is uh, this is uh, this is a signal for my body and for my brain that David, everything is uh, okay. Everything is under control. I'm still here for the customer. I'm still here for Michael. I'm still fighting, and everything goes on. Why would I? Uh, why would you? Uh, why would you wear uh, a watch or or a wedding ring? I do not forget that I am married at home. The thing is, I want to have a sense of normalcy. So if you used to uh, to wear makeup, wear it also on the on the calls, and always have your camera on. Uh, and that, uh, that that will actually force you to be presentable. And if you are presentable, your self-esteem will rise and the situation will go a little bit to normalcy. And regular exercise. There are a lot of uh, health gurus uh, out there. So I will not I will not elaborate on that very much. I will tell only one thing. Your body, uh, your mind needs it more than your body. So a little bit of exercise, even a little bit, even like like three minutes 
is uh, is much better than nothing because uh, because uh, in uh, what uh, what concerns uh, the body um, there is there is one tenet nothing is forgotten if you walk a, a flight of stairs uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, riding the uh, the elevator your body will not forget and if you eat the extra hamburger or the extra donut your body will not forget you can bet on it <laughs> so so regular right. exercise is is what you uh, what uh, what we really need to get uh, through this what about the work leisure harmony the cornerstone of work leisure harmony is planning and you would say like hey david come on uh wait uh, what do you mean by planning uh by planning i mean doing something for our future selves um uh before you close the no uh, the lid of your notebook and go to sleep or go to your leisure time doing doing whatever you like to do i would encourage you to plan for the next day maybe not uh, completely in detail but plan in an in a, in a sketch what you are going to do what you are going to accomplish the next day and how your next day will look like first it will it will make your sleep much better and uh, second uh, this planning is something you do for your tomorrow self. So the next day when you open the lid and power up the notebook, you will know what awaits you and you will have the sense of control. And the sense of control is the cornerstone of mental sanity. And when you are working, and a lot, most of us are working much more than we used to uh, uh, during the office time. There are serious statistics uh, saying that people work uh, up to 40 times, 40% 40, 40 more uh, than uh, at the office because we, we don't have this chat at the water cooler, right? We, we don't have uh, um, that uh, going to the cafeteria would take us 20 minutes, going, uh, going to the kitchen to get uh, coffee will take me like 10 seconds. So, so there are actually no breaks in the, in the working cycle and we work much more. I would encourage you introduce power breaks. Power breaks are not long breaks. Power breaks are short breaks, like 10 to 15 minutes, but they are very intense very intense for unwinding, for relaxing. Some people need um, loud techno music, let's say, or loud heavy metal music. Some people need a power nap. It's very refreshing. You should, uh, you, you should, uh, you guys uh, should, uh, should try it. Some people need to go to the computer and kill zombies. This is what I do. <laughs> I, I actually have killed uh, around 100 zombies before, before I, uh, before I joined this seminar. And, and, uh, <laughs> You should you should work out for yourself what uh, uh, what uh, what works and then do the uh, then do uh, one uh, power break uh, before noon and one power break uh, after noon uh, in the afternoon and these fifteen minutes will be paid tenfold in uh, increased concentration creativity in just just the sense of well being I would say well this one is crucial avoid drifting through the day which means uh, avoiding work creep. We spoke about uh, planning the day. And as the day goes on, as, as the life creeps into the day, there will be more and more tasks throughout the day. Always revert to your calendar and always revert uh, to your schedule and try to incorporate the new, uh, the new uh, tasks into your schedule. You may be uh, forced uh, to... Uh, to <laughs> Uh, to uh, let out some tasks which uh, which you set uh, uh, yourself to do uh, uh, the day before, but, uh, but uh, you will think about uh, like, okay, I will work from 8 to, let's say, 6 p.m. And that's that. And no work creep, no, uh, no additional tasks. Tomorrow is also a day. And tomorrow needs me rested and well. My family needs me rested and well. My pets need, uh, need me rested and well. And actually, the whole world needs me rested and well. So I will avoid uh, work creep. I will, and I will avoid drifting through the day like, oh, what should I do? There is so much. I don't know. Oh, let me do, uh, let me make another coffee. Let me do this. Let me do that. And uh, how many tasks I have? Oh, it's already 4 p.m. and I have 15 tasks to go. Okay, this will be a long day. And that's really bad for, especially for our brain. And the next day you will pay for it with uh, with uh, diminished concentration and with the overall sense of diminished quality of life this one is actually a brain hack 
if I have the feeling like, okay, today is really not my day and I'm not going to be the most cheerful and positive person, the, uh, the shining example of mental stability, well, try to be the leader. If you have a Zoom call with your colleagues and everybody is like downtrodden and and well, it's Monday, I don't want to do anything. Let's just uh, let's just procrastinate uh, another day. Just try you yourself, and I mean you really. Uh, try to be a leader for others. Try to be the one who sits a little bit more straight, chin a little bit more up, and saying to the others, "Okay, guys, I think we can make it. It's a nice and lovely and shiny day." Let's let's look at the bright side. Let's look at what we can do, and not not how is it bad. This will have the uh, the uh, the addition, uh, the edit effect on you that you will become what you preach, because you will uh, you will need to become the leader for other, for others. And when the call ends, you will uh, you will you will see that that you actually became what you not pretended, but what you um, what you showed. Let's uh, let's not uh, call it pretend. So uh, do it uh, do it once a week, and you will see you will see how it invigorates you. Oh, and mental stimulation. Well, well, well. Uh, do you remember these old hobbies of yours? All these old things you uh, you told yourself, like, oh, when I grow up, I would like to learn sax uh, to play saxophone, learn to juggle balls. Um, I would like to I would like to start my own YouTube channel, something like that. And you never came around to that. Now is the time. Whenever there was a time to do it, now is the time. So look into the shelf with your old dreams, dust them off, and pick one and begin and begin doing that. Uh, look up the saxophone. Uh, look up an old uh, old secondhand saxophone on the net. And you will see how it invigorates you because it brings it brings new things into your life which you always wanted to do. Stories are very important because uh, philosophers and psychologists would tell you that when people communicate with each other, they communicate through stories. Actually, each bullet point in my presentation is a small story. Maybe 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 every sentence is a small story. You uh, meet somebody at the water cooler and you ask uh, her, "Hey, hey, Stacy, how are you?" And Stacy says, "Ah, oh, well, not well today. I had a bad customer, and you know, you know, it it, it did not go well. And now I I don't know what what my boss says. She actually told you a, a small story, and you you will weigh in into the story and say, "Well, my day is uh, is not so great uh, anyway. Let's go to the, down to the cafeteria and drink another cup of coffee." So there are actually three stories in this in this uh, small exchange, and uh, we are bereft of all those stories now. So bring them back into your life. Read books if you want to go to sleep. Read business books, but if you want to be mentally invigorated, read romances, read science fiction, read stories, movies. Of course, watch Netflix. Even play computer games. They are great stories. If you want to be mentally alerted, bring more stories into your life because we need stories more than ever. And this one is actually very interesting. Uh, this is uh, the exercise in gratitude, reflecting on what we can be grateful for. Uh, if I would ask you, uh, should you count yourself lucky in some regard, what would that be? And for example, on top of my head, I would say, I'm so glad that I have a job, that I still have a job. I'm so glad that, uh, that uh, we still have electricity and internet and, and actually that uh, uh, very important people invited me to speak to a seminar. I'm, I'm glad to have, a, to have a leader like Michael who, did not, who, who, who does not uh, tell us, give me money, money, more money, who tell us rather uh, be nice to the customers because they need us more than ever uh, to have such a humane leader of the whole company. Actually, I count myself to be a to be a lucky duck, and 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 maybe maybe if you reflect on what you can be grateful for, you will also uh, go down the path and say, "Well, I should be so lucky, 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 lucky," <laughs> like uh, like this uh, famous song goes. <laughs> well, of course, the situation is not completely normal and sometimes you will have the feeling like okay 
I fail. I fail even at things uh, which, uh, which uh, normally I would not fail at. Like everything is upside down, like this guy uh, uh, riding the water ski scooter. And I feel vulnerable because I am I am uh, in these uh, in these four walls and uh, all those uh, all those ugly ugly memories and ugly ugly ideas. Uh, normally, I would stay uh, stave off uh, through uh, mingling with other people, are poking their uh, ugly heads around the corner, maybe, and I would feel vulnerable, even strange, even maybe I would have. Uh, I, uh, maybe you have the uh, the feeling like sometimes I would like to cry and. I'm a 240-pound uh, f- uh, guy, and I found myself uh, sitting on a, on a sofa and crying because my dog died uh, two months ago. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay because this is a normal, not, not a normal situation. And sometimes you, uh, you tell yourself, okay, I will not cry. I will just sing aloud and not, uh, not under the shower, but, but, just, but, just, but just to get the tension out of me. Remember one thing. If there was ever a time to be yourself, no matter, no matter what they say, no matter what they want, no matter what my inner parents want me to be, like, David, you should behave, you, you should be nice, then this is it. This is the time. Look at the guy closely. Look at him. He is still in the race. He is upside down. Yes, and, and you might feel like uh, being upside down, but he's still in the race. You are still here. You're still connected to this seminar. You still are listening. You still are posting your questions, and you still have something to say. And when the customer calls you in the, in the afternoon, you will still uh, be able to help him. You, will, you are still in the race. And when there was ever a time to do the right thing, like Michael told us uh, always, no matter what, no matter how painful, no matter how hard to do the right thing, then there is no better time than, uh, than now to do the right thing, no matter what you do. And if you do the right thing, actually, in things that matter, then you should concentrate on things uh, which you can also control. Because there are a lot of things that matter. For example, uh, you, you will hear at the news how many people unfortunately, really unfortunately died of Corona today. You will hear uh, how many people uh, have contracted the disease and you cannot do anything about it. But what you, what you can control and what matters is whether you wash your hands, for example. Uh, you can control whether you, are, uh, whether you are nice to people. You can control whether you call your parents or, or, or not. And you can control whether you will give an honest and sound advice to your customers or not. And, and our advisors at Dell also are here to give you free advice on a one-on-one basis, whilst working with you to exactly understand your bespoke business needs and to provide you with the right solutions. And if you would like to discuss your small business IT needs, and if you are looking for a professional support and advice, call our small business advisors today on 0800-085-4878. And my last slide, guys, is for the future. Is it only about survival? Imagine you will be uh, you will be old one day. You will be a grandma or a grandpa, and the grandchildren will ask you, "Grandpa, how was the first COVID uh, epidemics? How 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 did you how did you how did you uh, um, how did you go through it?" And you will say, "Well, child, it was not easy. We felt upside down. We felt like we are losing. We uh, I, I I myself felt like crying and." I was, uh, we all were uncertain because we did not know what the future holds for us. But with time and resilience and perseverance, we, we emerged and we prevailed. And at, when this was over, we emerged and we emerged transformed, somehow kinder somehow more humane, somehow more appreciative of the small and normal things in life, like, like uh, uh, having, a, ha- having a stout at a, at a nice beer garden, or, or seeing our colleagues uh, uh, in person without mouthpieces. And uh, we were just, somehow it transformed us to be kinder to each other and to be better people. And it's up to us, guys, whether we emerge from this as better people, kinder, more humane, or not. It is our decision to do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much indeed, David. Appreciate it. That was really nice. Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. Really good. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and what's 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 lockdown been like for you then? Um, and, and maybe share with everybody whereabouts you're broadcasting from at the moment as well. 
Yeah, I'm broadcasting from Bratislava. It's um, uh, it's a, a half million city near of Vienna in Slovakia. And uh, if you are asking me, Alex, how how the uh, the Home Office is working for me, then I must actually confess, splendid, <laughs> splendid, because I can be 24/7 with my wife and with my dog, and uh, those are the most precious uh, precious beings uh, in the whole universe for me. So, so even though I cannot I cannot communicate with people how I'm how how I would like, uh, I'm thankful, uh, I'm grateful that I can be uh, with my wife so much. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No. No. I, I totally get that, and, and likewise, that has been one of the benefits for me. You know, um, my wife and two two children here at home, and it was interesting today. My youngest daughter went back to school, um, and and she was pretty anxious last night about that. She's only eleven, and um, it was the fact that you know none of her friends were going to be in her her new class because the classes have you know changed size, and she's got a different teacher than she had before lockdown. Um, and it was quite emotional then taking it to school. A lot, a lot of the mothers and fathers there were like, God, it feels like they're going away to school for the first time ever. Like they're back, you know, being four years old again, start starting school again. And it's, you know, it, it, it is really interesting, you know, this this time how, you know, we've been forced to all be at home together. Um, but we've actually all gotten on really well together, you know, and actually enjoyed spending the time together. So um, I thought that was, you know, really your presentation was really mindful there. And, um, you know, these are some of the comments you've just got. Peter, wow, really good. Clive, thank you very much. Kieran, lovely city. Sarah, that was great. Thank you, David. Alan, thank you very much for that. Um, Alan, motivational. Um, very interesting. Joyce. Um, so, yeah, loads of good comments uh, from there. And what do you think? Um, some thank you. I'm humbled. Here. I'm humbled by the, by the nice oh. comments. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was really good. Um, Alan says he's spending more time wearing his shorts. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you can have a nice shirt, even with a tie, and then uh, then wear shorts. Nobody will. See. Yes, exactly. But you will see. You will see. <laughs> yeah, and flip flops instead of uh, instead of shoes and socks. Um, Andy Bone says, "Yeah, thanks, David. Passionate and heartwarming, Clive. Even after nine years doing homeworking, I've learned something I can implement." There you oh, thank go. you, that's thank you. That's very work. precious. Thank yeah. you. Um, Chris from Solo Timberframe says, "I have a have a few staff who'll be working from home permanently now. I'll per pass on the lessons um, to them. Thank you." Uh, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You do again. I guess we're only just going to start seeing this, but how many businesses actually implement this more uh, flexible working? Because uh, I know, again, just having spoken to to our neighbours when we all come out and we, we, you know, we've clapped for the NHS and we're social distancing and the conversations everybody has and people saying, when I go back to work, I'm going to tell my boss I want to be working from home so many days a week. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. And, you know, especially say with a lot of the flexible workspaces, the, the you know, the, the co-working spaces, et cetera. Um, Sarah said, Alex, I see you're standing. I am standing. Um, do you find sit standing important as part of your working day? Great question. First person to pick up on that, Sarah, throughout all my webinars hosting here. Um, it's something I, I actually started doing last year um, at my co uh, office space in, in Bournemouth here. And um, I actually prefer it now. And I find it's better for my back. Um, I've, I've done a hell of a lot of um, health and fitness during this time as well. Um, those of you who've been following me on here, I decided to run a marathon for the first time two weeks ago. So um, I did, did 26 miles and I just find standing up uh, is much better for my back, better for my hamstrings, which affects my lower back. Um, and yeah, it just stops me getting lethargic, I think, really. Alex, you could to, uh, take it uh, to another level to have a treadmill, actually, under the desk. Yeah, I've heard of that. Wow, yeah. That, I, yeah I could do a marathon every day. No, I don't want to do a marathon every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alan says, I have a client who has his team working from home, believes they are all more productive in the eight-hour day. Um, is that a common thought? Yeah, you've done a bunch of these webinars now, David. You, have you found that's quite a common thought from people that they are being more productive is that what you found yes 
Yes, yeah. actually, actually, I would say there is a discrepancy in um, in uh, the perception, uh, in in the initial perception, um, uh, especially from managers who who thought uh, like when I let the people out of my out of my uh, near side, they will they will just uh, squander the whole day. But but it's actually actually uh, uh, the opposite is true, that the people mm -hmm. have the tendency to overwork themselves, and and to experience burnout due to overworking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's true, um, and and I think um, I think a lot of employers, bosses, uh, would have been surprised at how productive their staff have gone. And also, I think with regards to um, people actually making decisions for themselves, you know, instead of having to go through that whole chain of command, because especially if you're a business and people are working in different countries and different time zones, I think. You know, I've worked for big companies like Virgin um, before and, the, um, you know, I remember it took them, nine, oh, what did it take them in the end? It took them 90 days to approve a podcast because 24 people had to listen to it. I mean, really? Surely that's a one person job, you know, and, and I think a lot of businesses have probably learned those lessons during these times to let their staff, you know, make the decisions for themselves. Um, Peter Henry said, and I saw somebody post up on LinkedIn today again, and I know it's, it's been brought up a number of times over the last year or so, and I can't remember the country where they do this, but trialing like a four-day week, David? That would be something. That would be actually something. And um, uh, uh, there is uh, there is some serious research into that in Harvard Business Review as well. Um, I, I would guess uh, that uh, their, uh, the productivity is actually, actually rising. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think so. And so it's funny because the person who posted it up had put, um, who feels, um, what are your thoughts on four day working week for 20% less salary? And, and everybody was like commenting going, I think you can do a five day working week within four days and get 100% salary. <laughs> Those are the Absolutely. Like that. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, people being incentivized and, and, and being, as you say, you know, taking a lot of these lessons that you've uh, talked about today um, and being more productive. And one, one of the things I, I picked up on myself, and thank you, everybody, for the comments that are still coming. That's great. Um, uh, Peter says, at 72, standing for hours isn't on. <laughs> no, that's fair enough, Peter. Um, absolutely. Sarah says she agrees. I assume that you uh, stand up as well. Sarah, sometimes I sit down, you know, when I you know, typing uh, certain things. I do a lot. And it's interesting, again, what are your thoughts on this, David? How much do you now, um, because of the way we're, we're adapting our working, how much do you work, uh, especially working with Dell there, how much do you work on a laptop? How much do you actually do on your phone? Do you do a little bit of both? Do you have a couple of screens as well? I have a couple of screens, yes. And... Um... And actually, I mostly work on my laptop because it's much co much more convenient. You don't have to move. Um, I, I'm 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 a trainer, coach, and mentor, so so I'm a typical corridor warrior, I would say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, and and now when I'm uh, when I'm sitting uh, on on my back and and doing uh, doing all those all those things at home, it's actually much more convenient to use uh, to use a physical keyboard and and not this small thing. Yeah, M maybe yeah. it's also generational. Because I'm Generation X, and and we are, we Me think too. that a proper a proper yeah. computer needs to be a big ugly thing, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. It's funny because I've um, I've got a podcast, a Facebook group in uh, for for podcasters, and somebody in there did a whole tutorial on how to um, record a piece of content, um, you know, drop it into the hosting platform put the, the music together, the intro, the outro, all these bits together. And they were showing, and they literally did it all on their phone. And I was like, and editing it. And I was like, I couldn't edit a podcast on, on one of these things. But he was, you know, Gen Z, and I'm the same as you, I'm Gen X. And I just think maybe it is a generational thing because I can't cope with um, anything other than maybe emails and social media Anything else? I need a big screen. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and physical, uh, physical keyboard, <laughs> where yeah. every key represents one letter. <laughs> Exa yeah, exactly, exactly. Such an anachronism, actually, for for the young generation. Mm. I'm going to read out some of the comments there because they're flying in. This is a super engaged presentation, so well done, uh, David. Um, Peter says he has a client who's going 
three days to the office, two days uh, home. Yeah, I think that or the other way is going to be a common common split. And that's what I was doing before this as well, um, Peter. And it just kind of depended on my mood because I'm my own boss, whether it was three days in the office or three days at home. Um, and Alan said, I think about this, and he's a client who has his team working from home, believes that, yeah, more productive. Um, daily planning should include limiting work hours. Uh, with AI working, weeks will reduce anyway. Yep. Uh, Cl Clive says you burn 50 kilocals per, more per hour by standing. The best result is to stand for an hour and then sit for an hour and repeat. Oh, OK. Thank you for that, Clive. And I probably do a, a pretty even split of both, to be honest with you, depending on the kind of tasks I'm doing, whether I'm and I think presenting, I, I feel because um, I do my own one every Wednesday on uh, on podcasting uh, on here so i'm doing one this wednesday and, and i find yes yeah, standing work standing works for me but others I, I do do sitting down uh chris says i feel for many people it's human nature to ease off the throttle when not being watched i'd worry that a four-day week would whilst lovely initially would quickly revert to the behavior pattern of a five-day week okay yeah Absolutely. and chris there is uh, 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 just just to uh, give the answer to chris uh, mm -hmm. there is uh, somebody who is always watching and this is your inner parent and he's telling you or she is telling you like you should work more chris chris don't uh, don't squander the day do not procrastinate so there will be always somebody watching you even when the boss is not around yeah you just you just project well. your inner parent into the boss yeah so that's that's it yeah that's good and I, we've i've just implemented a a new thing you know taking something from from one of your slides there as well as that um finishing a little earlier on friday because we have this glorious weather to go and play golf uh with uh, my friends because they've just opened up golf courses here about two weeks ago and uh, just thinking you know how productive are you at four o'clock on a friday anyway what does it, you know, do to take an extra hour and a half, hour and a half off? Because that for me, that three and a half hours does so much mentally for me, clears my head. I have some of my best thoughts when I'm out there working on the golf course, apart from when I hit a bad shot, because those aren't good thoughts, but you know what I mean. Yep. There is another thing, Alex, uh, I think I think we should be mentioning that uh, when you work into the office, uh, you need to ca uh, factor in uh, the time uh, you are spending driving to work and driving mm. from work. And this is this is completely killed time unless you are listening to podcasts or doing something worthwhile. But uh, anyway, when, when you are working from home, you can you can just close the lid at six and then be with your family. Just yeah. the, the transition is, is like is like three minutes. Yeah, you're, you're right. Then, you know, and, and it is, isn't it? No matter, even if your commute is a really short one like mine, 30 minutes each way, that's still an again, that's still another hour that you've gained for the day that you could do something. And if you add that up over a week, that's getting on for a day. You know, that's another five hours of so. It's nearly yeah. a working day, isn't it? Yeah, Not absolutely. Far off. And mm. that time will never come back. No, like... no, no, absolutely. Um, so Alan, Alan says, one of the major shipping lines has installed rays and lower decks workstations globally to enable periods standing and sitting but customized to individual needs works well very yeah. interesting in our offices in netherlands uh, we have it as well so uh, the uh, the uh, tables are um, adjustable yeah you, you push a button and you, you adjust it and this is so good this is so good especially when you are uh, the whole day behind the desk mm. Yeah, I, I remember reading about them, you know, coming out of Scandinavia a little while ago, then who originally came up with the idea for them. But um, uh, yeah, Peter says again, yeah, absolutely, Peter, no travel is great for the planet. Um, agree with you. Absolutely. Um, and, and I remember chatting to, to somebody recently on, on one of these webinars, and he's the CEO of a, of a global tech company. Uh, with offices, you know, in eight countries in the world, about to become 10. And he was saying, you know, before he'd think nothing of having to get on a flight to go to a different continent for a meeting that could last 45 minutes. And he was like, if one of the good things comes out of this period, that has got to stop because that's just no good for anybody at all. Absolutely. Although I must, I must admit that sometimes you need to see the people and they need to see you in person because then when you contact them afterwards and say like, hey, can you, can you do this analysis for me? They will, uh, they will uh, remember, ah, this is this ni uh, nice, uh, bold, uh, fat guy, David. Uh, okay, I will do this for him. Sometimes you need to be present. 
Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think I think there are some meetings that you have to physically be together with with people, and, and we've just noticed this as, as a team here at the Festival of Enterprise that you know the the Zoom meetings every couple of times a week, kind of lagging in enthusiasm, as you mentioned uh, in your presentation, David. And it's like we kind of feel the need now, but we all get together, um, and you know you you kind of build that camaraderie. You know, two months without seeing any colleagues is quite a long time. Um, Okay, so can we, yeah, Pete says, can we learn to not require physical meetings? That is, that is an interesting question in itself. Again, it could become a generational thing, perhaps. Who knows? Yes. Um, I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss It's anything. a behavioral thing, maybe. Mm, behavioral, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that, that, would, that would need some, some uh, psychological research, may, uh, because, because maybe that's our firmware. Maybe, maybe it's hardwired into us that, uh, that you need to see uh, uh, a, living, uh, a living human being and may, maybe the smells and maybe, maybe the, mm. um, uh, the oral um, uh, uh, hearing and, and everything. Who knows? Yeah, Who no, knows? really good point. Really good point. Um, Posted up here in 1974 during the three day week, Procter and Gamble discovered they could manufacture in three days what had taken them five. And yeah. it's like 50 years ago. Come on. And, and nobody yeah. has learned since uh, from that. That's very true. Um, just double checking. I haven't missed anybody. Uh, there's loads that have come through there. Um, better control on diet during this time. I wonder if you guys have been snacking more, Kieran says. Um, well, do you know what? Mine is pretty standard. Again, I, I have like an 11 o'clock, um, oh, it's in the fridge at the moment. I made one earlier called Huel, H-U-E-L, human fuel. So it's like a protein shake because uh, otherwise the default at you know, 11 is you want like a chocolate bar or a pastry. Um, and then for me, it's like um, mid afternoon, like some 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 nuts and some fruit. But I'm I'm pretty disciplined uh, personally, I have to say. How about you, David? Oh well, I'm I'm 240 pounds <laughs> overweight. Okay. So 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 what you, what should I tell? I'm not very disciplined, but I learned to exercise twice a day. Yeah, that's it what does I'm not thinking. necessarily show on the belly because I eat uh, a lot. I, I snack, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but the exercise makes you makes you really invigorated. It does it does? I'm I'm the same. So I'm I'm doing a program at the moment where I'm working working out twice a day as well. Um, I think yeah. Look, any any of oh course, so many comments. I'm scrolling, scrolling. Um, yeah, there's a bunch more as well. Here we go. Um, important to mix things up so you don't spend the whole day staring at a screen. That is one of the biggest takeaways from David's presentation. And I keep reminding myself to do that when you see that the time and you're like, oh, my God, 90 minutes has gone by and I haven't done anything yet to literally just walk from one room to another to the kitchen and, you know, make a cup of tea or coffee, whatever. It just relieves that stress on your, your, your joints, doesn't it? And mentally it takes you to a different place. Um, I heard my wife playing some music today, and I thought that's another good way to break things up. Um, more reliance on language, less on body language. Um, great. Peter says, thanks for the positivity. Got to run. Thank you very much. Um, well, great. David, any any closing thoughts for you? We're coming up to uh, the time. We've, we've, we've done really well here. The questions have been brilliant. They're kind words. Um, this has been, yeah, one of my favorite presentations, I have to say, and we're up to about 110 now or something crazy. Um, really, honestly, David, one of the most engaged that, that, that we've had. So thank you, thank you. Uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, any last thoughts, David, before we go? One thought to, to keep with us. One of your, what's your biggest takeaway from, from your presentation? You said you delivered it maybe 20 odd times now. Uh, what's one thing we should maybe keep in our minds when we say goodbye to you now? Okay, uh, the biggest takeaway would be uh, to focus on what I can control, and uh, uh, you can uh, you can view it in a in a in a uh, broader context. But you still can uh, should ask yourself: Okay, is this something that matters? And if it matters, what can I do about it? And then do it, and that's it. Love it. Perfect. Absolutely. Control what you can control. Um, and don't focus on what you can't. Absolutely. Um, 
Thank you, my friend. That's been wonderful. Really good. Really Thank good you, idea. Alex. Thank um, you, everybody. I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Absolutely. for joining us. Um, you can uh, connect with me, Alex Chisel, on LinkedIn. I'm going to send an email as well, and I'll, I'll get some contact details um, from the team and, and David to find out, to send you some more information uh, from Dell Technologies, um, because I'm sure they've got some super useful learnings during, during the last two months, for sure. Uh, there's going to be a lot more of us spending more time at home, I would have thought, in one way, shape or form. So the more we can optimize that, uh, without doubt, the better. So um, thank you all for your kind comments. Really enjoyed it. David, thank you once again. Uh, thank enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Absolutely. Have a great day, guys. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.